basically after going pretty viral on some podcasts and becoming an extremely successful OnlyFans creator, mm-hmm. I believe you were in the top 0.01% of all creators. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You have left it all behind. You've given your life to Christ. You've said, I don't want the desires of this world anymore. Absolutely. And there's been a lot of confusion and misinformation around what that story has looked like. There was a video that you posted a couple of months ago that really rattled the internet more than anything uh, related to the beginning of this journey. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play it for us. And I would love for you to just explain what that video meant for you and why you think it shocked so many people on Absolutely. the internet. Absolutely. We'll check this out. But your biggest fantasy is Cheating. Not you even cheat. my biggest, it's like one of my fantasies. So I was praying the night previous to that. And I was like, God, like, how do I show the world you in me? You know, like what you did for me. And that clip that um, I showed on that went so crazy viral when I was in that industry. And that was the video that came to my mind. I was like, you know, that's what I feel like people know me for is that clip, right? It blew up like crazy, got millions and millions and millions of views. And I wanted to correlate that to like the ultimate evil and sin and darkness that I was in, right? That clip, Mm -hmm. just like explaining like, So I was in that darkness and that sin for over five years in the industry. And I had, thankfully the church that I was, I got baptized at had had a wonderful like camera team. And my partner was there recording too. And I'm so thankful because that moment in my life changed me truly forever. When I, when I got out of that water, when I first like came up to the air, it was like this veil had truly torn and was gone like this filter it's crazy because i feel like i'm seeing things differently like i'm such a free bird you know and i want to go explore i'm kind of wild and i just want to go you know and i didn't want to be home because of kind of stuff that was going on at home and i didn't have like friends because everyone in the church was just very adult and there was like it was religion it wasn't even like relational now i'm not saying everyone in the church didn't have a relationship with god but i went through quite a few church splits as a family in the church that like broke us you know what i'm saying because yeah, totally. you you building 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 putting all this effort and work into a church and then it divides you know so i went through that multiple times and it was so hard to believe that those people actually loved christ because you know if you're loving jesus and loving christ and serving him and actively following after him why would there be a divide? You know what I'm saying? So that comes back to like us being selfish and prideful and thinking that there's a certain way to do church, you know, which is a common misconception. I think I really have a heart for people who have like a similar story to me, maybe not going into only fans or the adult industry, but who've been in like church families and have witnessed that stuff because it, it is hard to believe that those are real Christians, you know? And that's like kind of the conclusion that I came to was that, you know, maybe they were actually serving God the way they should have been. And I can't blame God for that. You know what I'm saying? So this page like structure, you really felt the need to rebel in Mm -hmm. some way. I don't think that's even radically against human psychology. I think every teenager in some capacity really wants to rebel (laughs) against their parents. And you especially do that when you come into adulthood and you move away uh, at 18. So for you, what did that rebellion initially look like? And how did that eventually lead into becoming an OnlyFans creator? Well, I would like sneak out of my windows at like two in the morning. And I would, um, I worked really long hours at like a fast food place just because I, I was like, I cannot be home right now. And again, a lot of it is because like I didn't have a really close relationship with my parents or siblings. And so I just yeah. felt like I needed to be out on my own. I was like always like texting other people and I didn't have a lot of privileges as it was like I had a cell phone, but it was always being monitored by my parents. Like they were very, very strict, like with what I wore, my makeup, like everything was so controlled so that when I could sneak out, it was all in my control. And that felt good, you know? Even though it was wrong, it was like some bit of freedom that I had control over and they didn't. So I got caught a couple times. My parents called the cops on me when one night when they found out. That was the worst night of my life, truly. Like it was awful. So Hmm. like I've been through so much um, just trying to escape, you know, escape myself, escape that. Just feel what I 
thought freedom was. So that's like, it really sucked to go about it that way. But, you know, fast forward a couple of years, I continued that kind of behavior until I got my own apartment. I was engaged and then I broke it off. Like it was, I've been through so much, but then five years ago, um, I was introduced to this guy online and he was like, he was on OnlyFans and he told me, he was just trying to sign me up on OnlyFans. Like that was his job was like a recruiter. Interesting. Yeah. How, oh, how was it introduced to you as a platform? So this guy just reached out to me on um, Instagram and him and I became partial friends, but then he got like really weird. And I was just like, oh, I don't really like this guy. I, I don't want to talk to him. He was having a weird relationship issues and tried to like pour that out on me. And I was just like, Ugh, uh, yeah. okay, like, I don't understand what's going on here. He was like, you should get on OnlyFans, use my code kind of thing. He introduced me to that. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to use your code, but I'll get on OnlyFans. What did that financial success look like? Was it this pull to start making pornographic content because you knew you were going to make more money on the yep. platform or have more subscribers. Like what did that snowball effect actually look like? So when I hit that 85 for the first month, I wasn't doing anything other than like some lewd pictures and that was truly it and messaging like that's it. So, but I was being offered more and more and more and more money to do more mm. things. So like, that's really how it started. And you know, when you're introduced into sin, like, and you don't really care about God or like the Holy Spirit convicting you, sin doesn't feel wrong. You don't feel guilty for it. So it's like, yeah. oh, sure. Let me just continue on this path. Let me continue making more and more money. Like I'm a boss ass, you know, whatever. Like I can do this. I'm an independent woman. It's just so such a wrong road to go down, unfortunately. And it's so sad. Like it's so sad that, you know, like even though men want to despise women for doing this, like men are the ones giving us money for this. You know, you're, yeah. you're participating in us going down. I'm not blaming the men at all, but I'm just saying if men want to have a viewpoint on us, you're the ones funding us, but it's prostitution. It is true prostitution online, man. It was just such a dark, dark time in my life. And someone on Fox news asked me, they were like, you know, if you could go back, what would you do? You know, if you could go back to your old self and like before you started OnlyFans, like what would you say to yourself or do? It's it's truly hor horrific that it's being advertised in that manner, but it makes me want to fight all the more to help women understand that this is not where you want to go. And I told her, I was like, I would shake myself and tell her, that girl right there, how worth how worth it she is, you know, how special she actually is. Cause man, I did not feel that way at all. I felt so insecure, not even about looks. I just felt so insecure. Like I was constantly going to the gym, constantly trying to reach this level of perfection that I never could reach, you know? And, you know, I've been through so many failed relationships. I was just like, man, where is this going? Like, where is my life going? You know, my family's relationship wasn't good even before that. Like I didn't have close friends. And if I did have a friend, they'd always leave or something bad would happen to where our relationship would break up. So I just like, I truly felt so alone. And this was something I could actually like handle, you know, it's like in front of me and I won't let it go, you know, like it won't let me go. So it was like some form of control to me, you know? And I was like, oh, the more I put into it, the more money I get out of it. That's great. You know, I'm providing for my future, you know, but there's so many other ways to do that. Like, <laughs> but like at the time I was just so, I was just believing the lies. Nala, thank you truly from the bottom of my heart for everything you are doing for this generation. Yes, I am so on fire for you. I'm praying for you every day. <laughs> As we close out tonight's stream, please join me in praying for Nala and the incredible work that she's doing to minister to people who desperately need to hear the truth about our faith and the joy that accompanies repenting from sin and leaving the shackles of this world behind. You guys can follow Nala exactly where she said on TikTok and on Instagram, and please consider doing so as she radically transforms the message that she is sharing with the world for the better. Also, if you loved this interview, please do us a huge favor and smash that follow or subscribe button so that we can keep growing these independent channels to tell more stories like Nala every single day.